All right, let's consider our review for quiz number eight. Again, after I finish these notes, I will post them on your module two under your uh, blackboard. So feel free to consult both the video here and the notes that I post. Uh, number one, question number one on your quiz will deal with asymptotes. And you may recall that this is, I think, section 6-1, something like that. But I told you we are not, when I say we, I mean those of you who are in my class, we are not going to be concerned with asymptotes. So you may simply skip this problem. Uh, it will look like you have a, a lower grade uh, when you finish, a course, because you have not answered this question. But this will not be counted against you. Likewise... Um, on your test, which will be coming up shortly, uh, when you have an asymptote question, you may simply skip it. Uh, it will not count against you in my grading of your test. So number one deals with asymptotes. Adios. Number two, find the formula for the inverse of the following function. And I'm given a function here, w, x, w of x is x minus two. Um, you may recall that the inverse of a function simply reverses your x and your y. For every xy ordered pair, there is a new ordered pair that you could call yx. So we're going to use that concept to find the inverse of a particular function. It's got some steps. Step number one, uh, I'm not going to be able to interchange the x and the y unless I see a y. So in the place of w of x, I'm going to uh, put y. So express as y equals. Instead of w of x equals, we're going to express it as y equals. That's easy enough. And number two, we are literally going to interchange the x and the y. Everywhere I have a y, I'm going to put an x. Everywhere I have an x, I'm going to put a y. That's the nature of an inverse. It reverses the xy to a yx, basically. All right, thirdly, I'm going to express in typical uh, uh, function fashion as y equals. So i got to solve this equation for y. That means get y by itself, and that's going to be pretty easy. Add 2, add 2. I get y is x plus 2. Expressed with a y first. Now I have finished. I have basically found the inverse, but uh, I probably will want to express it in inverse notation. And if this is w of x, the inverse of that would be w inverse of x. So instead of y equals, w inverse of x equals x plus 2. So these are my final, this is my final answer. One in the form of x and y, one in, the, one in function notation. Uh, Keep in mind, you probably haven't encountered this. When you see that negative 1 for your inverse, this is not an exponent. This simply is another way of using this symbolism, and it basically means the inverse of the function w. So here's my inverse, and follow these steps, and you can do it no matter how difficult or complex your uh, original function notation is. All right, number three, consider the following relation. There it is. Notice it's just a list of ordered pairs. This is one of the ways that we have been able to express a relation is as a list of ordered pairs. Find the inverse, R inverse, and express it as a list of ordered pairs. All right, I'm going to call this R inverse. 
Remember what an inverse does. For every xy, it gives you a yx. So I'm simply going to reverse the order of my ordered pairs. Instead of negative 2, 4, it's 4, negative 2. Instead of negative 4, negative 3, it's negative 3, negative 4, etc. 8, 1, 1, 8. 4, negative 8, negative 8, 4. So there is the inverse expressed as a list of ordered pairs. No big deal. Now find the domain and range of the inverse of this guy and express as a set of numbers. So the domain, you may recall, is all my first elements. The range, I'm sure you remember, is all of my second elements. So it says express as a set, so I'm going to do my set notation. And the domain is all the first elements, 4, negative 3, 1, and negative 8. That's easy enough. And the range is negative 2, negative 4, 8, and 4. And that's as simple as that is. Now dealing with exponents. <clears throat> Simplify using the properties of exponents. Final answer should have only positive exponents. And keep that in mind. You will never have a final answer with a negative exponent. A negative exponent always says, you got some more work to do. All right, first thing we can do is use uh, one of our properties of exponents that's commonly called a power to a power. And let me give you an example here. If you have something like uh, a to the fourth, to the third, we call that a power to a power. And you simply multiply the two exponents. Four times three is 12. And it doesn't matter if the powers are positive or negative. You still, if you have a power to a power, multiply your exponents. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind here is that every factor has an exponent, even when it's not visible. For instance, 4 is the same as 4 to the first. And you might want to put that down just to remind yourself that I need to multiply this negative 3 by each of these exponents. All right, negative 3 is still on the outside. I'm going to do powers to powers first. 1 times negative 3, that's 4 to the negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. All right, let's, let's continue to work in the parentheses. And notice I have negative exponents. Negative exponents are never in a final answer. I should always express with only positive exponents. Let me give you another example here of what I do to simplify an expression that has some negative exponents. Like if I have x squared, y to the negative 3. Another way I can express this is I can move the negative exponent to the other part of the fraction if I change the sign of my exponent. Hey, if you don't have a fraction, make a fraction. So this simplifies to the x squared stays where it is. It's not a problem. This is the problem. I can move the y to the negative 3 to the denominator and make it y to the positive 3. So that's what we're going to be doing here with these factors that have negative exponents. We're going to be moving them to the other part of the fraction and changing the sign of the exponents. So I now have a fraction here. A to the third is still in the numerator. 4 to the negative 3 moved to the other part of the fraction becomes 4 to the positive 3. B to the negative 12 moved becomes B to the positive 12. 
And one thing you're going to want to do is simplify things that you can simplify easily. 4 to the third, you can figure or use your calculator, is 64. And remember that any whole number is over 1, so I'm going to be multiplying the negative 3 by the numerator only. So without parentheses, my final answer is negative 3, a to the third, over 64, b to the twelfth. Notice only positive exponents. All right. Finally, simplify the following. This is a rational or fractional exponents. Uh, but the good news about it is that uh, the properties of exponents still hold. And if I have powers to a power, I multiply the exponents. So let's not forget that that's an exponent there. Even though it's invisible, it's an understood one. So I'm going to multiply 3 halves times 1, 3 halves times 3. I get 100 to the 1 times 3 halves is just 3 halves. And x, 3 is the same as 3 over 1, right? That's 9 over 2. Now, I'm going to want to use my uh, understanding of rational or fractional exponents to simplify 100 to the 3 over 2. Here's the, uh, I think, the uh, example that I gave you uh, in the notes, 8 to the 2 thirds. This may be re-expressed, a fractional exponent may be re-expressed as a radical expression. And this guy right here, the denominator becomes what is called the index. The base becomes what is called the radicand. And the numerator is going to be my exponent. So I have to do a couple of things. Number one, I have to find the cube root of 8. In other words, what times itself 3 times gives me 8. Well, that's 2. And your calculator can help you with the cube root of 8. And then I have to square it. 2 squared turns out to be 4. So 8 to the 2 thirds turns out to be 4. Now I need to do the same thing, the same concept here, with 100 to the 3 over 2. Make sure you get each part in the right place. 100 to the 3 over 2, x to the 9 over 2. Now I'm going to change this to radical form. This, the denominator, is going to be my index. So that's just the square root of 100 to the third power. Now some of you may go, hey, well, when I was in school we did it this way. 100 to 3 over 2 is 100 uh, to the third power. You put the third power under here instead of on the outside, and then the square root of that. You can do that, but I got to do the 100 to the third power, which means a very, very big number, and then take the square root of that. This keeps my numbers smaller. First thing I do is take square root of 100. Oh yeah, that's 10. Take that to the third power. I can handle that. Putting the exponent on the outside instead of the inside, you'll get the same results, but this just deals with smaller numbers. 10 to the third is 1,000. Third power, three zeros. Oh yeah, that's not a coincidence x to the 9 over 2. And there you have it. All right, I will post this uh, on Monday morning. 
uh, probably 7 a.m. And it will be due Tuesday evening uh, at 11.55 p.m. So you got two full waking days to look at this and figure out these four problems. All right, good luck to you.